Sylvie lived on a farm with her grandmother, where she helped with the chores. Looking for Mistress Mooley was one of her favorite ways to spend an afternoon. There were few neighbors in those days. So Sylvie had few friends and lots of time to herself, which she liked to spend alone in the forest. Is it to the road? How far is it? I was out hunting for some birds and I lost my way. Don't be afraid. Speak up and tell me what your name is, and if you think I can spend the night at your house and go out hunting in the morning. Won't you even tell me your name? Sylvie. Evening, ma'am. Evening. I thought maybe you could put me up for the night and perhaps give me some milk. Well, and sakes, yes. You might fare better up the road about a mile, but you're welcome to what we got. You can sleep on husks of feathers. I raised them all myself. That would be fine, ma'am. I'll milk right off. You make yourself at home. And Sylvie, you step around and set a place for the gentleman. four children along with my husband and he died 15 years ago. Sylvie's mother and a son in California is all I've got left. There have been some mighty lonesome moments, I don't mind telling you. But it's a lot nicer now that Sylvie's here. She keeps me company evening. I chose her out of my daughter's whole house full of children. And I got her out of the city into the sunshine and fresh air. She's plumped up a mite since she got here. Afraid of folks, they said when I took her. Afraid of folks. Well, I guess she won't be bothered none with them up here, at this old place. That was a mighty fine dinner, ma'am. I'm glad you liked it. You remind me of Dan, my boy. He was a great hand to go hunting. I never lacked for squirrel or partridge when he was to home. Sylvie takes after him. There ain't a foot of ground around here that she don't know her way around. And the wild critters, where well, they take her as one of themselves. Squirrels, she'll tame to come up and eat right out of her hand and all sorts of birds. Anything but crows, I tell her. Anything but crows, I'm willing to support.
So Sylvie knows about birds, does she? I'm making a collection of birds myself. There are two or three I've been hunting for five years. You mean to cage them up? Oh, no, they're stuffed and preserved. Dozens and dozens of them. And I caught and snared them all myself. I caught a glimpse of a white heron about three miles from here Saturday. And I followed it in this direction. They have never been found in this district at all. You'd know a great white if you saw one. A queer, tall bird with soft feathers and long, thin legs and a crested head. I'd give anyone ten dollars who could show it to me. surrounding woods and marshes in hopes she could lead him to the white heron. No one had ever asked Sylvie what she knew about the woods before. She was pleased to have someone so interested in her. She had seen the bird he described, and she thought she could find it again. The day with a young hunter was becoming an adventure in her quiet, solitary life. All the trees in this forest are evergreen trees. They take up so much space and use so much light that the deciduous trees can't grow here. so close together, you don't see many birds in here either. They come in sometimes, but this really isn't their place. Indian pipes. Not very many people have seen those. They don't grow very many places. See how wet it is underneath there? They need that. They need the shade, too, so they have to grow in the forest like this. They're like mushrooms, sort of. People try to grow them sometimes, but it never works.
I have to kill these birds so I can study them. It's the only way I can get close enough to, to really examine them. You understand that, don't you? Sylvie could not understand why the young man killed the birds. She knew he liked them as much as she did. And he seemed so kind and sympathetic. His friendship had awakened in her feelings she had never felt before. to understand his ways. Together they sat by the marsh, wondering if the heron would come. I guess we won't see the white heron today, Sylvie. You keep that. Sylvie could not sleep. Her mind was full of thoughts of the hunter and the bird. She had become part of his adventure and she wanted to find it for him. She thought if she climbed the tallest tree at daybreak, she could see all the world and discover where the heron flew.
Did you see the heron? Did you see the heron, Sylvie? Well, Sylvie, if that's it, you'd better be telling this nice young man about it. Make it worthwhile, tearing yourself up like this. Thank you, ma'am. 